All right, welcome to another edition of uh, Beginner Breakdown. I am your host, Mike Hummer. Today we'll be going over the most famous game of chess of all time. It's uh, Paul Morphy against the Duke and the Count. All right, so he's one guy against two. All right, so who do you like? Who do you like? All right, Paul Morphy was a very good chess player. He was born in uh, New Orleans in uh, the 1830s. And uh, he got really, really good at chess. And he decided to travel over to uh, Europe to take on uh, the best players. And uh, he never got to play for the world championship. But, uh, but at one time, he uh, went to an opera, enjoying the opera. And uh, the Duke of Brunswick had a box right next to the, uh, the stage there. And uh, he's seen the play so many times, he got bored of it and said, hey, Paul Moore, if you come over and uh, play me, OK? So Paul Morphy played, he had the white pieces, and uh, he played against the Duke of Brunswick and, uh, and the Duke's friend, uh, Count Izzard, okay? So Paul Morphy has the uh, white pieces in this game. So he starts out, very common, e4, okay? He's a very uh, attacking player. So they played e5, the standard king's pawn opening. White attacks the pawn, knight f3. And now black plays a very passive move, d6. This is called the Philidor defense. Hopefully nobody in the audience plays the Philidor, OK? This is very weak. Look, it already just boxed in your dark squared bishop here, and very passive. So when uh, one of your opponents is playing passively, you want to play aggressively, OK? So an aggressive move here would be d4, attack the center. All right, so, so black should just go ahead and just take it, OK? But instead, he decides to get crafty, the duke and the count. They play bishop to g4 to pin the knight. So what they're counting on is, uh, when they take this pawn, they'll take the knight, queen will take, pawn will take, and everything's looking good, right? Like we all have the uh, equal number of pieces. But this queen, very dangerous on f3, targeting the f7 square, OK? Obviously, they're not going to just take f7 now, or else king would take, OK? so. So what's a way that uh, white can threaten checkmate in this position? Yes. Yeah, 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 you, you. Bishop to c4, right. Bishop c4. It's always good to attack checkmate, or threaten checkmate, OK? So black, uh, they have many ways to, uh, to defend it. And they choose knight to f6. And now. OK, so checkmate is off the table. But now white has a very good move here. He can capitalize on this pawn being undefended and this pawn being very, very weak. So what move do we have here for white? Jim? Uh, queen to b3. Good. So this queen is attacking the pawn through an x-ray, OK? So he's got two players coming down on f7 and only one defender. Kings can't capture protected pieces, and he's taking that. OK. So the count and the duke, they're like, OK, let's play queen to, to e7. We'll protect the pawn. And then when Paul Morphy takes takes on b7, we're going to have a very good move here. How in the world can the count and the duke save their rook? Queen to b4, Queen to b4 check. Good. Uh, he's got to take, take. And then, you know, they're darn a pawn, but they're not going to get checkmated, right? Now Paul Morphy, he saw this, and he wants to watch the, uh, the play here, OK? So 
he doesn't want a big, long, drawn-out game, okay? He wants to, uh, to enjoy himself, okay? So he decides, I'm not going to take the pawn because then, uh, you know, the queens are going to be traded. So he's going to play his knight up to c3, okay? So, so, now, so now black with queen to e7, they've stopped f7, right? So now he wants to stop b6. He also probably doesn't want his, this knight getting into b5 or d5 as well. So what, what's a cool move uh, black can play here to, uh, to protect his pawn and stop this knight from advancing? <laughs> c6, good. See, discovered, discovered protection, okay? All right, so, so a very interesting thing in this game, as you'll see, as our good friend uh, Julian pointed out to me, uh, in this game, Paul Morphy never moves backwards. He never retreats, never retreats. He's always either moving parallel or forward, okay? So, keeping that in mind when you try to look at White's best moves here, okay? So, so look, Paul Morphy was really good at getting all his pieces off the back row and into the game, okay? So, so we got this rook, bishop, and other rook that need to play still. All right, so who do you think we should get off the back row and start playing? The bishop, the bishop okay? So, bishops, their big trick is pinning pieces, okay? So bishop pins the knight. Also, now his threat is, uh, so if he like attacks it or something, I'll take, if you take back with the queen, I get your pawn. If, um, if I take back, my pawns are just gonna be uh, no good, okay? So, so lots of good threats there just by uh, pinning pieces. So black like, he says, I have enough of this. I'm playing b5, okay? So now I'm attacking the bishop. Remember, Paul Morphy, he doesn't want to retreat in the game. So notice this pawn attacking the bishop, supported by this pawn. So he's going to get two pawns for a minor piece. This isn't really advisable unless you have uh, some kind of a uh, good kingside attack where you're attacking the king. But this king is in the center of the board, so it might be advisable to try to just break it open and keep the pressure on. So if you were going to take this b5 pawn, how would you take it? Would you take it with the queen, the knight, or the bishop? Who votes for the knight? <laughs> well, who's seen this game? <laughs> they all voted for the knight. They're all as good as Paul Morphy. All right. Pawn takes, knight takes, and now we'll take with the bishop for the check. And so he's already got one knight in a pin. They're like, let's put our other knight in a pin. Okay. And now, when pieces are in pins, it's very important to attack them. Okay. You want to attack pinned pieces. So knowing that, what do you think Paul Morphy played? We want to attack the pinned pieces. Rook D1. Rook D1. What's a move just a little bit better than Rook to D1 that also puts our Rook on D1? <laughs> Long castle. Long castle, okay. You might as well get your king safe. But the idea is put your Rook on D1, okay. So castles, okay. All right, so, so now let's see what black does. Because he is, neither of his knights can move. His bishop can't move. This is not going very well. He must protect this knight. So he doesn't long castle. He plays rook to d8, OK? So now Paul Morphy sees, wow, my rook is on h1, not doing anything, right? So he could just put it to e1, but that's pretty weak, right? 
I mean, what's he doing on E1, really? Just protecting a pawn? So which file do you think he wants this rook to be on? The D file. The D file. I mean, this is where all the action is, the D file. So he clears out this other rook. Okay, now he's got to take back with the rook, right? Because if he takes back with the queen, he loses the queen. Takes back with the knight, he loses the queen. Illegal for him to take with the king. So he's got to take with the rook, right? All right, so he just sacrificed an exchange. But now it made room for this rook to get to d1, okay? And now he's attacking a pin piece again. So now it's really tough for the count and the duke to protect this rook again. So they try to get a queen trade. Does anybody think that Paul Morphy's like, OK, I'll just trade queens and, and hope? No. No. All right. So he doesn't do that. Uh, does anybody have any good ideas? Th this is kind of tough what he does. So it's OK to capture pin pieces, right, as we saw earlier, if, you know, if you're going to get another attacker onto a pin piece, or um, you know, if you calculate it out that you're going to win a lot of material. Okay. So he actually takes, bishop takes rook with check. Okay. So obviously, if he takes with the queen, the rook's just going to take, right? And he can't take with the king, so hey, I'll take with the knight. OK. So, so now white has a good combination here. Some people have probably already seen it before. But notice in this position, um, what would happen if this rook could somehow get to d8? It'd be checkmate, right? So, so then you just have to ask yourself, why, why is it my rook? Why can't it go to d8? And you say, hey, this knight's blocking it. So if, if you could all agree, if some way we can get the knight out of there, right, we could play rook to d8 checkmate. Obviously, rook takes. Knight doesn't work because, hey, queen will take the rook. And then I don't have checkmate. Or the king could even take the rook, which would be the best move if rook takes knight. OK, so, so we want to get our rook to d8, but we can't because a dumb knight's in the way. OK? So if only we could force that knight off of d7, we would have checkmate. Is there any way we can force this knight out of here? Queen to b8. Check. All right. The only legal move black has is knight takes queen. And then we just slide our rook right up for the checkmate. All right. So that is uh, Paul Morphy's uh, famous game. He beat two people, the count and the duke. And it's also referred to as the opera game because they were uh, watching a, an opera at the time. Okay, so that so that's the uh, that's the game. Now a lot of people say, "Oh, Paul Morphy, he played great," but I'm going to show you that um, unfortunately not a game like Paul Morphy. I'm going to show you how to play like the Count and the Duke. Okay, this nobody will ever show you. All right, this. All right. So everybody says Paul Morphy played great. But um, in this game, I have the black pieces. And unfortunately, I play like the Count and the Duke. So we're going to see if uh, I can make any improvements on the Count and the Duke. <laughs> Good luck. All right. So in this game, I play my uh, boss uh, for the uh, chess club ladder rank of number one. Okay, I have the black pieces. And I'm going to play like the Count and the Duke. All right. So white plays d4. So in, in the Morphy game, he played e4. So this will transpose. I play the move d6. Now white plays e4. And black plays e5. I was hoping that white would take 
I would take queen takes check, king takes. Although this looks a little odd, um, white is going to be uh, fine here, or black is going to be fine here, um, because he can't really get, get checked. He's just going to get his uh, king pawn on c6, king on c7, and his king will be uh, nice and safe. Okay, But um, Tony plays uh, knight f3, and so I play it. So this should look very familiar. So, so if you watch the last game, what should uh, white play here? So you guys want to play like Paul Morphy, <laughs> what would you play? You know? What did Paul Morphy play in the, uh, in the opera game? Not quite. He takes the pawn, right? Because if I take back the pawn, queen takes, king takes, and now knight takes pawn, threatening the bishop, and uh, knight takes f7, chuck, forking the rook and the king. Okay? So pawn takes pawn, so now black has to play bishop takes knight, so queen takes, and now pawn takes. And now we get bishop to c4, threatening checkmate, OK? So, so I remembered a little bit of the uh, count in the Duke game. So I'm like, well, I'm not going to put my knight on f6, because that's, that's crazy, OK? So I'm going to play queen to f6, which I, actually isn't much better. Because white's going to fall or do the, uh, the same thing. What did he play in the game? Queen, Queen to b3, threatening here and here. OK. So I, I don't have uh, the, uh, the move. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and thread my own check. Or, All right, bishop to c5, okay? All right, so what should Tony play now? Okay, so I just played bishop to c5. I'm threatening queen takes f2, check. So now what we have to do is analyze who has the stronger threat, right? Like, so if I was playing at home, if I was playing, white should be considering queen takes b7, winning the rook then? Or should he be afraid of queen takes f2 check? Do you think if he gets queen takes f2 check in, if he plays that, if he plays queen takes f2 check, am I going to have any kind of uh, attack? Or, or is this going to be worth the rook? What do you think? Should white play queen takes b7 and take this variation, or should he just uh, take the uh, coward's way out and just castle the safety? Uh, allowing me then to play bishop to b6 and stopping all the shenanigans. What would you do if you were playing white? Would you go for it? Take the pawn? OK. So what if, what if black plays this move, queen to c6? See how that, uh, that protects the rook through an x-ray? Why is that a double question mark move? Lose you lose the queen. Yeah, good. You lose the queen. Thank you. Bishop to b5. And now the queen's got no place to go. All right. So let's say I went down there and checked king here. Now what does he do? He could take this pawn, maybe. Do we want to take his rook? Or do we want to take make a? All we have to do is move our rook. We can actually move our rook to f1, because it's protected by the bishop, huh? And then I could take here. Well, I wouldn't take there. I'd probably play knight to f6 to protect it. 
queen takes, castle. And now who do you think's winning? White. White. White's crushing, okay? So, so that's what you want to do. You want to look at your opponent's threats and say, hey, you know, you got nothing. All right? You can take F2 because your attack's going nowhere. I'm going to win a rook, okay? Unfortunately, in this position, uh, after I played bishop to c5, he thought he saw a cool, uh, a cool check here. After bishop takes f7, queen takes, and now he plays queen to b5 check, thinking he's going to win the bishop. Why doesn't he win the bishop? <laughs> yeah, knight goes to d7, protects the bishop. So now Tony's in a lot of uh, trouble. So, so now, he, unfortunately, I guess he got angry. He should definitely, now I still have this, this major threat on, right? So at this point, he should just, uh, you know, just castle and get the safety. But instead, he takes. And now he lets all, all this uh, bad stuff happen to him. Rook to d8, put the knight and the rook in the same, uh, same row as the king. And uh, it's going to be tough for him now. Queen takes c7. Queen takes g2. Rook to e1. And uh, it's probably no fun to play on... Uh, on white side right now. So you just check. King to d2. Now we finally get this discovered check in. And uh, things are going going good for uh, for uh, for black for sure. So so actually, he's in such a bad predicament here. What would happen if he would play king to c3? Do we have any kind of a, oh, well, that would happen. <laughs> yeah, we would just take the rook, and uh, it would all, all be down. And um, so, so he takes. King takes, and uh, see how white failed to really develop here. So knight to c3, it's just too late now. Knight to f6, b4, and it's just essentially a mop-up time. But we still have to watch out for threats, right? Because just because we're in mop-up time mode, doesn't mean like he's not going to try and crush us. Because what did he just play by playing bishop to b2? This is when, this is like sometimes people say, oh, it's so tough to win a one game because they tend to fall asleep at the board. It's like, oh, I just played bishop to b2, whatever. I'll, maybe I'll get my rook out, OK? But what, what, what is he attacking with bishop to b2 here? Queen. The queen, yeah. So we better move the queen, all right? Queen to g2. Rook to d1. He's threatening a discovered check here. So queen to g5 check. King to d3. That's where we want him. We didn't want him to get safe over here. We want to win as fast as possible here. Bishop to d4. King to c4. King e7. Let's our rook play. King to b3. Just take, take. We'll get a check in here. The more we trade pieces, the easier it is going to be for us to win here. e5, knight to d5, rook takes d4. Protect it. And now, now he gets, uh, so we can't move our knight. Or he puts our knight into a pin or else he'll take our rook. Well, we got the pawn here. So c4. Okay. So we kind of let him back in the game here. 
but we try a trick here with a5 and fortunately he falls for it. He plays a3 here instead of just taking the knight and now when we get a4 check he's got to move his king and now what move do we make just to uh, to basically just end end the game? Knight to c3 check. No reason to play knight takes b4 check, right? That would just give, begin overnight. We can just play knight to c3 check, and uh, and this game is in the bag here. Rook takes d4, doesn't matter. King takes c3, and uh, rook takes check. King takes, and uh, it's not even worth watching the end of the game. King to d1, and uh, we'll just march our king up the board, and there's nothing he can do. Don't check him here, or else it's not mate. Check him here. Checkmate, okay? So that's that, okay? So, so that's a little improvement on the uh, count and the duke game. But it's not advisable to play like them because you, you saw that Tony had a great chance early on to just take the pawn and win here. Um, so it's not advisable. But here's another game. I fall for it again here. All right, so it's very important to, uh, to know what you're doing for move one of the game, okay? So, so unfortunately, I played like the Count of the Duke not once, but twice, okay? This is a game from uh, not too long ago from, uh, what was that last one? The, the Show Me Classic, okay? I was playing a 1900 uh, Jonathan, who's not here tonight. Uh, but, but if you're not careful for move one, if you just go in the game to say, oh, I'll just do whatever, you could end up playing a bad opening, okay? So once again, I had the, uh, the black pieces here. And um, so white starts out d4 at d6. So now you should know if, if your opponent plays d4, don't play d6, okay? Just, just go all the way to d5 because that will stop white from playing e4, okay? So d4, d6, and um, so then we got e4 here. And so this is very, uh, so black plays bishop to g4 again, okay? So what do you think white does here? Take the pawn, <laughs> take the pawn right. All right, so now I have to take the bishop. Queen takes, pawn takes, and what happens? Bishop here, okay. So, so once again, queen to f6, queen to b3, okay. So now I decide not to play bishop to c5 again, and because I figured, hey, it didn't actually threaten checkmate before. So, so I play b6. But look how weak that makes all my light squares around here, okay? And see if white can punish me for doing that. So if you watched Paul Morphy's game, right, what did Paul Morphy try to do? Did he, did he move a lot of his pieces just around a lot, or did he try to get everybody involved? He tried to get everybody playing, right? So if Paul Morphy was playing this game, he wouldn't like go for the check or anything. He would probably just play his knight out to c3, right, like he played and maybe try to thread in here, maybe try to get in here, or maybe just try to get another piece in, okay? So that's what, he was really big on getting rapid development and attacks, okay? But by playing uh, bishop to e3, I mean, that's kind of where my bishop wants to go. And what's this really attacking, anything? Like, you almost want to save this bishop move for a possible uh, queen deflection, if you can. Okay, so bishop to e3, knight to d7. Now I'm threatening to get my bishop out here. 
So now he pins my knight. Okay. But now I get to move c6 in. Kind of like the Count and the Duke played c6 and it was a good move. Probably their only good move in the game. I get the c6 move in. So bishop to a6. Now all your peace values are based on uh, how mobile your pieces are, okay? By playing bishop to a6, black has a chance to kind of smother him, okay? So, so if you wanted to try to trap this bishop, what move would you play? B5. B5, let's see, yep, B5, okay, it attacks the queen. And now this bishop can't get out on this diagonal. So the queen only has one or two moves, I guess. Queen to a5. All right, so now he put his king and the queen in the same diagonal, but this bishop check doesn't work because he can just take, okay? So bishop to c5, threatening. So if he takes back, I'm going to take with the knight, and now this bishop is under attack, and under pressure, okay? So white decides, yeah, I'll, I'll, it's time to get castle, okay? So castle. So now if I take here, he'll take back, and you'll see how he'll have a discovered attack on my queen. Okay, so even though I want to give him double pawns and uh, and they're isolated pawns, it's not worth it because then this rook will be bearing down on my f file, okay? So you always want to look at the consequences to your captures, okay? So I decide to retreat and attack the queen, and now the queen goes back. So now all I have to do is attack this bishop, and he'll be a goner. Is knight to b8 a good move? Why is knight b8 a bogus move? <laughs> All right, so Peter says maybe not the right answer. What would you play, Jim? Oh, Bishop to b7 wins the rook, okay? So we got to be careful. We got to be careful. Okay, so, um, so now black just tries to develop normally and get castled. So now white finally gets him off, castled. So now, so all of white's advantage from early on are gone because of a, a mistake in the opening. Instead of just developing pieces, getting castled, he decided to try to, uh, to get his bishop down here and, and win the rook when it just wasn't going to happen. So he needed to calculate that out and see, hey, there's no way I can really win this rook, so I shouldn't, I shouldn't try that. So White's idea should be to try to free this bishop. How would you go about trying to free this bishop? Any ideas? A4. A4. Yeah, good. That, that's, what he, uh, that's what I would be playing. Because the bishop's pretty much useless down here, right? So. But instead he tries knight to b3, rook to d8, he challenges the file. So now knight to b8 works because if he plays bishop to b7, which is what he plays, my rook's not attacked. All right, so, so rook to d6, he attacks it, so take, take. So now he's got two attackers on my rook, and I only have one defender. Do you think I'm going to take and, and let him have the D file? No. See, I want that D file. So how can I keep the D file? Stack the rooks. Stack the rooks. Good. All right. Rook, rook there. That way I'll have the D file. If I take, look at what I would have just done. Even though it would have been check, and it's all well and good, oh, I checked them. But now look, now he's got the D file, and he can start punishing me, okay? So you never want to give away the files, okay? All right, so now a lot of things get traded, and at the end of the day, I still have the D file, okay? So now he needs to run his king over here 
So then he can challenge the file. All right, king here. So now he decides to break open with a4. So he plays, I play b4, OK? Because if I, if I take here, look at how powerful his rook just got, OK? He's attacking the pawn, and that pawn's a goner, OK? So you never want to open your files for, uh, for your opponent, OK? So just pass it up, so a6. So now this, uh, this is a goner. There's no way I'm going to be able to, uh, to trap the uh, bishop. So I might as well get my knight to play, OK? So now the bishop's free. So he attacks the pawn. So the worst move in all of chess, if you guys have been following the series, maybe Steven knows, Peter, Peter might know. What, what's the worst move you can always play in chess? F6, OK. F6. So, so I do play the worst move, but there's logic to it, OK? So I don't want you to think I'm a hypocrite or nothing. So f6. So notice the queens are off the board. My king isn't castled and on g8, OK? f6, by playing f6, this really isn't going to hurt me, OK? He's not going to get any kind of check or pin or discovery. My king's not over there, so f6 is fine in this position because, I mean, it's the end game. It'll be OK. So f6, it works in that position. And he counters with f3. f6 is good. It supports this pawn. It gets all these guys in a pawn chain here. All right, so king up, knight back to d2, rook up attacks the bishop, but it's protected by the knight. Pawn plays c3, takes, takes. And now we pretty much go uh, back and forth for a while. Knight attacks the rook. Rook attacks the pawn. Rook protects the pawn. I go back. He challenges the file. I go back. And then we could just be doing this all day. Rook to c1, rook back, rook here. And it ends in a draw uh, eventually, OK? So, so that's, that's, the, uh, that's the game. That's the uh, famous uh, count in the Duke game. So, so who do you think had a better strategy, Morphy or the count in the Duke? Morphy, good. He wants to get all his pieces out, attacking, castling, developed. While the Duke, all he did was put his pieces into pins, never really got any pieces out of his territory. So that's what you have to do. And when your opponent makes mistakes in the opening by playing really, really passive moves, like the Philidor defense, or even like uh, d6, g6. That's when you really want to get your pawns out to e4, d4, uh, get your knights developed, and really put the pressure on. Uh, attack that f7 square, because that's the time to strike, OK? Because they're not striking. They're letting you do whatever you want, and that's what you want to do. Make sense to everybody? All right, fantastic. All right, thank you all for uh, coming for another edition of Beginner Breakdown.